Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm finally happy to be able to bring you another update in my ongoing series on my teardrop style camper trailer. Here you can see things basically as they were left from the last video. I wasn't overly happy with the way the interior skin of the camper had turned out. You can see it looks rather rough and there's gaps in the joints and even with a coat of paint it wouldn't have come up looking very professional. So I had a few ideas of coating the inside with carpet or some type of material uh, but what I ended up doing was actually just purchasing a cheap $15 blanket from our local Kmart and then using a few litres of contact cement and slowly affixing the blanket to the walls and ceiling of the interior of the camper. So it came up looking pretty good but if you've got a keen eye you may see there were a few bubbles and lumps in it. Uh, if I'd taken a bit more time I guess I could have probably eliminated those problems but they're really quite, not quite noticeable in the overall finish and compared to how it looked initially it really does come up 100% and gives an extra layer of added insulation if we're using the camper during winter. So here you can see the toolbox and wheel arches where they were fitted to the exterior of the camper. So once I had those interior walls finished I was able to start installing the electronics that I had planned for the camper, running all the cabling through the walls. Uh, here you can see where that cabling was run through what is the interior skin and will be covered by the exterior skin. So once I got all the electronics in place there was the charging points. I had a car stereo that I installed with the speakers on the rear wall, the interior lights. I had them all hooked up to the battery at this stage just so I could test them. The main reason being that because as you saw I had all that cabling run through the interior wall I wanted to make sure that everything was working 100% before I got on to tackle the exterior skin and everything would be encased and I wasn't able to get at it. Here you can also see the multimedia player and where it was installed. And just a simple test of it, just another great little piece of equipment that can play movies from USB or any type of memory card. Another view of some of the exterior cabling and where the antenna will be fitted for use with the stereo. Here's the testing of the electronics in the kitchenette area, the charging ports and the lighting within that area. So you can see the entire interior here with all the electronics installed and the walls covered. The walls still need a bit of trimming and so forth at this point but it's looking a lot better than it had been. So now you can see the interior walls have been final trimmed and glued all on the edges. Uh, it looks 100% to what it had initially and I was really pleased with the way it came up at this stage. Some of the rear access door here has been painted in preparation for the exterior skin to go on. Here you can see all the wiring to be held within the walls for the camper, now including also the charging cables that come from the solar panel on top of the camper that run down to the battery box at the front. Finally starting the insulation and the exterior skin on the camper and exactly what we accomplished on the first day of installing it. I wasn't going to insulate the camper initially but uh, the cost was fairly minimal to buy a bag of insulation to install within it and I figured it will probably be worth it in the long run both in summer and winter here in Australia. You can see the exterior skin went on quite well around the exterior curves of the trailer. Uh, we used pop rivets and quite a deal of silicon just to ensure that I wasn't going to get any leaks around from the edges and so forth to install it. So you can see all the sides being fitted here. Uh, when we got down around the wheel arches we had to remove the wheel arches and the wheels to be able to install the cladding to that area behind the wheel arches.
So at this stage you can see it's starting to come up looking fairly decent like an actual camper trailer now. Uh, the two side access doors still need to be fitted with the cladding and there's also still a fair bit of work to be done on flashing the exterior corners, uh, keeping them fitted and waterproof to anything. You can see the wires protruding through the panelling here for the exterior lights on the camper trailer uh, and also the solar panel that's to be fitted to the top. All the lockable handles were installed onto the rear access door and that basically completed that area. Though I didn't put any insulation into the skin on the rear access door because there is the, the solid wall from the kitchenette between the sleeping area and this access door. I didn't figure it was required there. So now we're after another stage of work. Here you can see the interior of the sleeping area on the camper has been completely finished. Uh, all the trimming has been done on the shelving area to cover any exposed timber uh, that was there. So other than the actual sleeping mattress on the floor, everything within this sleeping area is 100% complete at this point. You can also see all the exterior lighting and the flashing and corners onto the exterior skin of the camper have all been completed. Some simple mud flaps put onto the wheels just to keep it a bit clean. The view from the front of the camper and going around to the driver's side of the camper also. You can see here obviously all of the, the flashing done. You will notice that neither of the side access doors have been fitted at this stage. They still need to be done and refitted back onto the camper. If you can sneak a peek behind the toolbox here, you can see where the wires come from the inside wall of the camper through to the toolbox itself where the battery will be held. All of the solar controller and the battery need to be fitted out properly within this toolbox still at this stage. And here's the camper now as it stands as of last weekend. It's basically usable at this point. You can see all of the exterior doors are fitted with the locking mechanisms. You can see here the, there is the awning attached to the side of it. It's just a standard four wheel drive awning so anyone who's used one of those would be fully aware of how that works. The solar panel here fitted down and installed on the roof of the camper. Now inside the front box of the camper, as you can see over on the side, that's my stackable camp oven. Once we actually get this out and using it, I'll show everyone how that works. But I have the battery installed, the solar panel controllers all installed and operating. I still have a kill switch here that I want to install onto the battery just to make things a bit easier that when it's packed away, or if you're in a position where you don't want the electronics to be running, it's just easier to switch everything off within the unit. Here you can briefly see the interior of the door skins have been coated with that blanket material that I use for the entire walls just to keep the look and feel of everything the same interior and it come up looking quite good. A view of some of the side marker lights on the top of the camper. You can also see the antenna on the other side and another view of the solar panel where it's installed. Here's a better view of the side doors, the exterior locking mechanism, the interior skin on those as well, and the trimming around the doors. It came up looking quite professional. So here you can see me run through some of the electronics on the interior of the cabin again. Uh, the lighting, the, the radio and the multimedia player. If you've made it this far through the video I'd just like to thank you for watching also. Uh, I have a full series of everything that I did to build this trailer right from scratch uh, that if you look back through my other videos you'll be able to find those. And also if this video has been helpful to you in any way it'd be really appreciated if you could throw a like onto the video and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more things like this in the future or if you want to see me 
in the very near future take this out onto some trips and getting around Australia. Also, if there's anything in the build that you'd like to see more in detail or want some better description of how I completed the work, just shoot me a comment in the comment sections down below and I'd be happy to make either a video or just explain things to you a bit more clearly. So what's left to do on the camper? Well, basically it's finishing off this kitchenette area. Uh, initially I wanted some sort of water container to have on board the camper. Uh, I then threw out the idea, I didn't think I was going to be able to make it feasible, but I've since come back and definitely want to do it again. I purchased a 50 litre water tank uh, through eBay that you can see here. The only problem I've run into is initially I wanted to install this underneath my chassis on the bottom of the camper. I thought I'd purchased one that was going to fit but this one was a lot deeper than I anticipated and it was going to just stick down and potentially be punctured or something. So now I'm left with the dilemma I'm probably going to have to fit it within this kitchenette area to make it work. So you can also see here the 12 volt pump that will pump the water around the unit. Uh, also the stainless steel sink and the outlet tap that w runs from the pump. I have a few other bits and pieces to fit out this kitchenette area. Some magnetic knife holders to fit up onto the wall or I'm not exactly sure where at this point but where knives can be attached to just to secure them while you're traveling also the magnetic spice rack to be able to make cooking a bit nicer while you're traveling and just to keep things contained and neat within the unit and a cling wrap baking paper and paper towel holder that will affix to the wall just to make things a bit more easily accessible when you're cooking and cleaner within the unit I also purchased a gas hot water system. Once I knew I'd have the water tank installed, uh, I knew that I wanted one of these just to make showering a lot easier when you're away from anything, anywhere that has showers available. And just if you want hot water, it's a lot better than having to boil something on a campfire or get it prepared that way. Not 100% sure still where this will be installed, but probably onto the front of the camper uh, because I'll have to keep a gas bottle installed up at that point to run this machine. So once again thank you for watching, if there's anything you want to see in more detail please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments section below. Hit that like button if I've helped you out in any way and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Thank you.